What is happening, everybody? James Hancock here. Hope everyone had an amazing weekend, but I'm back to review episode three of season three of Ash vs. Evil Dead, an episode called Apparently Dead. This episode title may prove to be eerily prophetic because I got some really bad news this past week that I saw over on the website Bloody Disgusting. I've got some stats here, and I don't know if this includes numbers from the app or solely from the Star's channel on cable, but here are some viewership ratings for Ash vs. Evil Dead so far. Apparently, episode one of season three, 200 125,000 viewers. Episode 2, 171,000 viewers. Previously, the lowest viewed episode ever in the history of the show was 237,000, whereas the season 1 and season 2 premieres both debuted at over 400,000. Once again, I hope that on the app, you've got secretly just hundreds of thousands of people following the show and that stars will continue to make this show for a good long while. But unless more people start watching it and talking about it and so on and so forth, we might be seeing the final seven stories featuring Ash Williams, something that makes me very sad. So if you're a fan, even if you're a casual fan, definitely encourage people to check it out or definitely encourage people to just get the Stars app, binge the entire show, and then delete the app. You can get the app for free for a month, watch all the Ash vs. Evil Dead goodness that you want, and then move on about your merry way, and you will have successfully helped the show. And I know what I'm going to say in this review sounds a little strange in a video where I'm imploring people to follow the show, but I feel like episode 3, Apparently Dead, was one of the weaker episodes of the show to date. I absolutely love and adore Ash vs. Evil Dead. I love the character. I love Bruce Campbell. I love everything about this franchise. But this was one episode where I felt like they were coasting a little bit. But it was also an episode where I started to realize I'm not the world's biggest fan so far of Ash's daughter, Brandy. At least as written, she's a little annoying and she becomes increasingly so as the season progresses. My hope is that they'll turn that around and that before the end of the season, she'll discover her genetic heritage and turn into a chainsaw wielding, shotgun blasting badass like her father. But right now, as it stands, her character is kind of acting like an anchor on the show, just a tad. But the main thrust of this episode deals with the funeral of her mother, Candy, and all the chaos and hijinks that ensue after Ash accidentally finds himself trapped in the coffin with the mother who's now become a deadite. Bruce Campbell's always been a master of comedy, but I love how he shows up to the funeral wearing maybe the most garish, trashy suit that I've ever seen on camera. It's basically three different shades of blue, one of which is like a blue plaid, but he also has this just horrific yellow tie that looks like vomit. But what I love is that he actually genuinely, sincerely means well. He actually is trying to be a father. It would have been very easy and very predictable for them to depict Ash as somebody who's running away from responsibilities. But I love the fact that quite the opposite, now that he has a daughter, it's actually she who doesn't want him, and he's doing everything in his power trying to win her over. But we get this great bit where after he hears that the mother's had her head surgically reattached, he realizes, you know, she was killed by a deadite. She might possibly be becoming a deadite herself. And he goes up to the coffin and pokes her arm with a fork a few times, kind of nonchalantly to see if she might rise up. But when her body mysteriously vanishes, Ash goes in to investigate and ends up accidentally inside the coffin. And then we get this bit that actually was the scariest moment in the history of the show to date. This is a very fun, very energetic show, but not often scary, almost never scary. But there's this great scene where he's in the coffin looking at his feet, and suddenly Candy's head pops up and he roars and screams. The scares don't last very long because she proceeds to give him an oil check and he starts hooting and hollering in pleasure from a deadite having her finger wedged up his ass. I mean, while this episode was kind of lukewarm, this particular scene was glorious. And of course, this leads to the spectacle of him emerging from the coffin mid-funeral, which only further alienates his daughter, Brandy. One of the main subplots of this season so far has basically been Ruby's attempts at stealing the loyalty and love and the heart and affection of Brandy away from Ash. And that would be totally fine, just there's just one too many scenes that end with Brandy crying or pouting and kind of storming out of the room and slamming doors behind her. But meanwhile, my other two favorite characters, Pablo and Kelly, they get to have an adventure which takes them back to the ground upon which the original cabin used to rest. Pablo has one of his crazy visions where he sees this naked spirit lady and she basically gives him the mission of finding the Ken Darian dagger and that the dagger must be found at all costs. Dalton is still trying to convince Kelly that Pablo is not to be trusted, but Pablo, Kelly, and Dalton they go back to where the original Evil Dead cabin was and they do some digging. And when they find the dagger, we get this really cool action sequence. I mean, if you're a fan of Evil Dead, going back to the earliest days, we all love these crazy careening POV shots with the camera racing through the woods. And they've added little extra bells and whistles and extra flourishes over time. But we might get our best one ever in this one because as the POV is coming toward them, we see like dust and leaves swirling in front of it. And there's even this great bit where it goes under a car and grabs Dalton and goes up and into the air. Technically, it was one of the most impressive POV shots they've ever done. Dalton ends up impaled on a tree, tells Kelly that it's totally Pablo's fault, but then he goes full deadite and attacks her. 
Pablo rushes in with a truck, saves the day. Something tells me Kelly is too smart to think for long that Pablo is going to be a legitimate threat. So it almost feels like a waste of time introducing the subplot where people are trying to introduce into Kelly some doubt and suspicion about her friend Pablo. And that's another thing that's kind of dragging the season down is I don't believe for a second that Kelly and Pablo are actually going to fight to the death at the end of the season. Although Bruce Campbell did come out in public and say that the end of season three will serve as a fitting series finale. If there are no more seasons to this show, that the end of the season will bring the story to a close. Once again, fingers crossed. I hope that is not the case. At least we'll be left with some sort of satisfactory conclusion. But this episode ends with an interesting confrontation. Ruby is continuing to try and undermine Brandy's loyalty to Ash and so she does a strange little bee ritual where she raises Ash's dad from the grave and we get this pretty cool sequence where Brandy's back home and she's going through all of her dad's things she's looking at his uniform and she puts on a mixtape that Ash made for Cheryl and we get this great version of Crimson and Clover and as she's kind of dancing around the room we get this creepy sequence as this rotting corpse is coming up to the house and he goes into the shower and he starts kind of peeling away different parts of his flesh but as it turns out it's Ash's dad brought back from the grave and he's trying to do everything in his power to pull Brandy's loyalty away from Ash over to him. Ash realizes that his dad is a deadite. He's having none of it. And we get this crazy little action bit, which I absolutely love, where Ash takes off his robotic hand, pops on the chainsaw, and he flips onto his feet, ready for action. Just a great little action beat. He successfully takes on his dad, but it results in like a, basically a volcano of blood erupting all over Brandy, and she leaves the house for good. So while there are little bits and details and scenes throughout this episode that I thoroughly enjoyed, just in terms of the plot... I was a little bit let down. So as much as I love and admire this show, and as much as I want this show to stick around for a very long time, I have to be honest when the show does fall short. So hopefully I'll bounce back with episode four next week. But in the meantime, if you're a fan of Evil Dead, if you're a fan of Ash, please go out and tell the world that they should be watching this show. Because I feel like if anyone starts, even if they don't know the movies, if they just start with episode one of Ash vs. Evil Dead from season one, they're just going to have an absolute blast. But I hope you enjoyed my reaction and review. Please consider giving my channel a subscribe. If you want to talk more, give me a shout on Twitter at Colbrax or leave a comment in the comments below. But as always, Thank you so much for watching my channel. I'll be back at y'all in the very near future. So long.